We were about to pull away from the slip, the dock, and then we heard a, a water running sound and a bilge pump running sound. So the water heater that we just had replaced, apparently when it was replaced, somewhere back here, something got pinched. Uh, one of the lines, probably the, I don't know if it's cold water, hot water, but it is now just gushing out and we turned it on. So I've called the guy that we had, put this in for us. Uh, I've emptied it and we need to move it around, see what's damaged so we can replace it and get to it. So typical boat stuff, found the leak. Um, so the hot line coming out of the water heater, which starts over here, um, was pinched in. In the bottom of this, there's a split, which you can't really tell when there's not water pressure on, but as soon as you turn it on, well, there's what you see dripping. Um, as soon as you turn it on, you hear air hissing as it's trying to refill the tank. So what I need to do is cut this and put a splice in there instead of having to replace the entire section of hose, which is going to be difficult. So I'm going to use one of these with a couple of um, hose clamps on both sides, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so there's the split. I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but right there, you can see there's like a, a split that's forming, and that actually loses a lot of water when it's under pressure. So I'm going to cut out that segment just from there to there, and then put the hose barb in. Okay, next challenge. I have that splice put in there, but now I'm worried that all that metal is going to be abrading against those other lines, and I'm going to have the same problem on another one because instead of being pinched, it's going to just be scratched through. So my next option would be to try to insulate that with something, which is going to add some thickness to it and make things maybe a little bit tighter. Or that line basically goes through underneath this area, comes up here, goes out towards the hull and goes to that T. And then I just get a replacement line that's long enough to replace the whole thing. Then there's no seam in it, which is nice uh, as well. But it's a lot more of a pain in the butt and, but it's probably the best thing to do. So I, I need new half inch hose so I can replace this the right way. We have our boat at Deaton Yacht Services, which is in Oriental on Whitaker Creek. We've been here several times. We first got the boat. We had some of the work done here, had it hauled out so we can get bottom paint put on, which we did part of. We had them sand it and then we applied it. Uh, but anyways, we had a new deck light and steaming light put onto the mast. And then also had a flag halyard um, uh, put onto the spreader. And we're still over here. We were going to head out and then notice the, the leak, obviously. Um, and I was about to try to run out. So John Deaton is the owner of Deaton Yacht Services. This is a view of their facility. That's their haul out lift. And that pressure treated box is their pump out. John was over there working. And so I went over and bothered him and asked for some advice. And he said, here's what I would do. We have that hose. I'm like, yeah, but you guys, your parts desk is closed, right? So he's like, yeah, but I, I mean, I can go get, get some for you. So he stopped what he was doing and helped me out, brought me up there. And he just, it's part of the reason we love Oriental so much is because everyone that we've met down here will stop what they're doing to help you. Even if they're in the middle of something that's frustrating them. He was having trouble getting the right parts to work for the pump out, but it didn't matter. Um, took the time to help me out. So I didn't have to run out to try to find maybe the right thing. So just the shout out to John for being a great guy and taking care of his customers like he would take care of his family. So just want to pass it on. Now I actually have the right hose. I can get back to the fun. Okay. Cold water line is attached and the new, thanks to John, uh, hot water line is now attached. And you can see it goes into the sole and snakes back around and I'll go cut to the end here. I still have to attach that end, but uh, I want to make sure I have enough slack and then I'll cut off any extra. I got about a foot or so longer just to make sure I had something to work with. And I probably have enough room to just stash the extra in here so that uh, it might make it a little bit easier to get this heater to back, be back in there and the hose is not to get pinched this time. So uh, one thing, if you ever get, your, if you ever get a, uh, a boat and you have someone do a survey one of the things that a good surveyor is going to do is they're going to look for all of the um, fittings and they're going to see if there's two hose clamps on and that's what you'll that's what you want to see 
um, and it's basically just a redundancy uh, step. So if one of them fails or is not quite tight enough, you have a second one. It's really important on things like your engine coolant lines where you don't want to all of a sudden not have um, coolant flowing because one of these springs leak. So I uh, just thought I'd pass that on since this is staring right at me. Um, now comes the fun part of trying to get this thing to fit into a hole in which it can barely fit. Oh, and I had to get a little more starboard too. So starboard is a, um, it's like a plastic resin material and the person I had put this um, water heater in, um, put a couple pieces, but I think it really needs one more because if you'll see, this, this is the one that I added, this one on the bottom, it's three quarter thick. And those all stacked up make this basically flush, just a tiny hair under, but that's going to be fine. So I'm going to shove these up against this side, make sure the hoses are um, not pinched. I'll probably screw this down to this to this um, plywood piece just to make sure they can't shift over time. And then I'll try to lower this thing in here and, and get it all buttoned back up and hopefully have a non-leaking water system. Okay, almost done. Um, I got the starboard that I was talking about, which is uh, the plastic resin that's used in the marine industry. Um, if your local boatyard doesn't have that, you can always just use gold bullion. It's going to cost about the same, um, and you'll add some more ballast to your boat. Uh, I, I kid, but um, only by a little bit, because um, that piece I got was three quarters of an inch, and it's great that it's available for me to just go buy, but it was 30 bucks for this one square foot. And then the quarter inch, which I got in case I needed to shim it up a little bit more, that was $10, which makes sense because it's kind of just by cubic volume. Um, so I'm going to attach this. I don't, I didn't bring a drill with me. I wasn't expecting to do this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I had, I did have some silicone that was needed to be just tossed after today anyways. So I use that to adhere all the pieces together. Once that's set, this isn't going to move at all. And that will go attached to down here. And there's not a lot of motion that would cause this to move, but just, you know, over the course of years and a lot of waves, it's going to all shift. So by putting this down with a little bit of silicone, it'll hold it. If it needs to come up, you know, with a little bit of force, that silicone should break free, but it should hold really well, um, you know, unless someone wants to take it off. And hopefully I'm done soon. Okay, um, everybody else is out checking out the town. I didn't want to make them all get held up so that I could get this fixed. So I need to get this uh, uh, large water heater back into this opening and it's a really tight fit. So what I'm gonna try, and you'll either get a laugh or, I don't know, maybe I'll get lucky and it'll work well. I took some paracord I made, I put a loop around this so I can lift it up and drop it down there, and then I'll untie the knot and be able to pull out the excess, in theory. So we'll see how that goes. Got it in there. I had to readjust the rope, but it seems like this might actually work. At least to lower it. Okay, it's in there kind of. Make sure it's not actually on the hoses, which it is. So we should probably fix that. Done, finally. Okay, the water heater repair is complete. And I'm glad I did it the way I did because um, I'm not going to have to worry about it failing in the future. Uh, at least I don't think I will. Um, I wasn't sure if I should bring up the name of the person that did the work, but I'm going to. Um, and mainly because I reached out to him and explained what happened and he felt terrible. And he's, he's done work for me before and uh, had no reason to suspect that it, it wouldn't be good work and that he wouldn't stand by it. So. When we were done with the trip that we went on, uh, I did hear from him, and he was like, you know, you don't owe us anything. Um, I chose to send him, a, you know, a little, at least a little bit to cover the material costs, and because he had to run back and forth um, to check on the fit of a different water heater that we were trying to use. So his name is Daryl Foster, and his company is Foster Mobile Marine. He's based in Oriental. Um, he'll come to wherever your boat is located, and. Um, I think one of the things that I've learned is you don't really get to know how good a company is and how much they stand behind the work until something goes wrong. It's really easy to say all the right things and if nothing goes wrong, well you don't know what they would have done. 
So um, I will use them in the future and I don't have any hesitation. It was an honest mistake. Um, and I think even when I was putting it back in, it was pinched at first when I put it back in. I, I knew to look for it because it had just happened, but it's an easy, easy thing that can happen. Um, and it's a really tight fit. So anyways, uh, I would recommend Daryl. Um, he does a lot of engine work, generator work, um, kind of any of that stuff that goes on inside the boat. And you, the nice thing is a lot of times you don't have to take it to a boat yard or get it hauled out. He can come, come to you and, and do that work uh, wherever the boat's located. So, um, Daryl and Sharon, um, no hard feelings. I know it was an honest mistake and you guys did right by me. So thank you very much. And anyone else that's watching this that has to get work done in that area, still would not hesitate to recommend their work. Um, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed uh, seeing something frustrating that you didn't have to live through. You got to just watch it. And uh, I have a couple more coming up. And I'll keep doing these if there's interest in seeing some of the more technical things. Thanks and take care.